So I am excited that we're talking and I'm excited that Beth is here. Um, We've been trying to do this multiple times and I feel like it was completely God's timing that it worked out today. Mm -hmm. I wanted to kind of give some gratitude to Dr. Chapik, who professionally and personally has helped me so much. And Beth is our clinic and community outreach director for the Seattle office where Dr. Chapik is. And she's been an amazing resource and she's Mm -hmm. able to... Anyone that's interested in learning more about the clinic, if you're a professional and trying to get in a patient. And we've been tag teaming a lot of brain health coaches and just kind of educating them about the services that we have, uh, including functional medicine consults, which is what I did with you after multiple spec scans and doing all the treatments based on the spec and still not kind of getting where I wanted to be. And I think it's about almost exactly a year post treatment with you. And you told me it was going to be six to nine months before I started noticing the improvements that I wanted, which was just a mild fatigue, mild low motivation on certain days, especially depending on my cycle, which went into my hormones. I've seen multiple functional medicine doctors in the Southeast that are specialists and were wonderful, but they continue to give me different information each time. Wanted to do testing completely different ways. Blood, saliva, saying one is so much better than the other. You were the only person that could bring everything together. I knew what was actually going on with me. It validated the feelings of me not being crazy. I knew that at some point in my life, I lost the H of my ADHD. And the few talks that we've done about ADHD, I'm just helping people realize that that's a good thing. Like when you have a lot of energy, motivation, and drive to do things, let's channel that into a way that's going to help people. And I'm finally with your help able to do some of those things. And so I'm really excited that we get to talk about it and just kind of share my experience that I've had with the testing and the protocols that you offer your patients. Um, It's a delight to talk with you and it's a delight to work with you really, because um, you're so motivated and energized and, uh, you know, and just thanks for being vulnerable and open and sharing with people your journey and your experience, because that's how we help. You know, it's like it's it's scary when when you have these multiple health issues, you see multiple people and like even your family doctors, they don't know what's going on. You then see a uh, natural medicine specialist, maybe they aren't helping. And, and then you feel like giving up, but you didn't give up. You were persistent. You kept searching for answers and and finally put things together. And um, so just to help people know that there's hope and uh, there's um, and not to give up, to keep, keep looking for answers. There's a lot of information out there. And, you know, we're complicated. Sometimes it is just a simple sore throat and you need a round of antibiotics because it's strep and it's severe. But what if that strep turns into uh, pandas or some, your kid or yourself, you start having anxiety or OCD or tick disorder after a strep throat. That's essentially what pandas is, is a, um, basically it's a mental health issue, but it's from a physical cause. And you mentioned ADD. I mean, you know, there's a lot of things that can affect our focus and, uh, you know, from our diet to exercise to, if you're deficient in a nutrient like iron, for example, if you're low in iron, um, ferritin, iron, ferritin is how you uh, measure iron, but ferritin uh, and iron, those, that's a cofactor for making dopamine, which dopamine is it's all about dopamine when it comes to ADD. But anyway. right. <laughs> yeah, but I was doing intakes for the clinic in Atlanta for several years, and I was doing some of the standard questions we ask in the history to parents of children and teens that very quickly developed certain symptoms. My first question, did they have strep or a strain of mono? And the parents look at me like I had four heads and like, (laughs) but what does that have to do with anything going through right now? And Uh I said, well, that's what we're going to talk about with the doctor (laughs) and we'll see if there's some things that we can actually uncover And again, so many things that can be mild versus severe. And I think that's what makes my story so different is when I had strap as a kid, I was pretty much on my deathbed. I was in so much pain and 
my doctor was always like, the next time you have it, we'll take your tonsils out. And that next time never happened as severely as the few times that I had it when I was little. So I didn't get them taken out until I was 20, 21. And I literally couldn't leave, you know, a cold surface because I had flu like symptoms for for a week and a half. And then also had mono on top of that. And that's what you helped me remember when we did our labs and you said my Epstein bar markers are literally off the charts and Mm. for, you know, 15 years since I had anything like that for symptoms. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Mono um, and Epstein bar in particular, and there's a difference there when it comes to, um, you know, the, the question that we ask is, have you ever had mono before in the past? And usually the, the virus that causes mono is Epstein-Barr. There are also a cytomegalovirus or CMV. And what can happen is, um, you know, the, it's, it's kind of, I like to talk about chicken pox. So someone, you know, most of us have had chicken pox when we were a kid. And then when you're 80, you may have shingles. This outbreak, this very painful outbreak, but it's mm. the same virus, varicella zoster, has been with you this whole time, ready to go when your immune system is suppressed. And you had had other variables that had suppressed your immune system, allowing the Epstein Barr virus to sort of take root and take hold and come out again. And then your immune system's fighting it. And we all know when we're sick, and our immune system's fired up, it takes a huge amount of energy and we're so fatigued. And that's what you just like, this low grade chronic fatigue situation where your immune system's fighting but not fully mounting the immune response. So it's not a full mono syndrome. It's more like this low grade, just draining. It's like a hole in the bottom of your boat that you didn't know was there. It's draining, draining, draining. You're trying to- sh- I love that analogy. <laughs> You're bailing their boat, you're like caffeine or whatever I can do to keep going. But yep. until we plug that hole, you're just going to be losing water or taking on water, I guess. Yeah. Well, and that was what was so validating when you shared the labs is that you were surprised that my fatigue wasn't worse with the numbers of the Epstein ball mm-hmm. along with the mycoplasma pneumonia and then the heavy metals. And mm-hmm. yeah crazy that I, I mean, I still, I mean, I've been in the clinic almost eight years now and I mean, I've never called out of work once. Like I never get like general sick and I've always just been, you know, taking my vitamin C, I've taken my vitamin D, trying to make general healthy decisions on a daily basis to keep my immune system up. My mom was like growing up in Maine is the best thing for me because I was always outside just like playing in the dirt and <laughs> building my immunity. Yeah. And so don't look like, and I don't have a typical history of someone that has a crappy immune system, but when you pulled numbers, it was like, you know, just very surprising to you, which made me feel so much better because all the other doctors had said it's kind of out of line what we're seeing, but not enough to treat. And I'm like, well, that's not what I'm looking for. Like I want to treat something to find something. Yeah. It comes down to looking at the whole person. So I'm a naturopathic physician by my original training. And then I've worked the past 12 years in mental health, um, the past seven at Amen Clinics, six at his partial hospital program, where I got my psychiatric training. And uh, I just think looking at the whole person and matching the labs with what's going on with symptoms. It's and and so it's not like we have we have to wait till you're past this certain level, then we can treat you. It's more like, okay, let's use these numbers to give us information of what's maybe going on. And I think your diligence, your determination, your taking care of yourself and trying to pull yourself up has helped you just, yeah, not miss work and and be a, a, you're just naturally kind of a driven, persistent person. And I think that's a testament there, despite all of these um, sort of, health issues that were pulling at you, you just, you just kept going forward. And um, so, yeah, I think if, as we can pull away that dead weight, those things that are dragging you down, the, you know, the better you, that you felt. And so. I was going to say the first, I still remember one of the first questions and it was the first time that a doctor asked me a question that I didn't think had anything to do with my labs. And it was just kind of a funny <laughs> way to be on the other side you saw my heavy metals. And the first question you asked is, do you wear a red lipstick? And I was like, absolutely not. Never worn red lipstick in my life. And 
figure out why your lead is so high. Right. Yes. Red lipstick. So <laughs> it's crazy that, that we don't have regulations with body products, topical health and beauty products. And red lipstick is a high source of lead for some women and men if they wear red lipstick too. But like anyone who wears red lipstick could have lead in their body and should be checked. Because man, think about this, like your lips are in between, you know, inside your mouth, it's mucous membrane that's very um, moist and absorbs stuff really well. And then your skin doesn't absorb stuff very well, but your lips absorb pretty well. So yeah, that can be a pretty significant sort. Also, um, in uh, if you live next to a, a airport, like a small airport, they've measured kids that live or go to school within a mile of a small airport have higher levels of lead in their blood because they still allow leaded gasoline in in a smaller aircraft. So about half the airports or half the planes in the U.S. have used leaded gasoline still. They're phasing it out. And like 10 years ago, they said, okay, we should move away from this. Most have adopted it. But so like larger commercial airplanes have unleaded gasoline. But some of the small ones. Yeah. Well, I just remember I grew up in a very old paper mill town in Maine. And I totally forgot to mention that to you. It's probably important. Absolutely. That's a huge source of heavy. Yeah. Again, sometimes we don't know what's around us. And there's this website called Scorecard and you can enter in your zip code and it will tell you what major polluters are in your zip code and around you and wow. do detective work. So we, we, that's awesome. Between yeah. that and the Think Dirty app, we can have yeah. a lot of information that yeah. is used to us resolution not to fear us. I know that a lot of us are dealing with fear and just trying to think, you know, the, I feel like the word health is just, everybody's talking about it. And there's such a wonderful thing that we can do. There's so many wonderful people out there like you that can help us get information, get treatment. And um, I was hoping you could share a little bit about what we did for my treatment. Sure. Yeah, and it really comes down to supporting the body, um, removing the the barriers to immune health. So when it comes to lead, uh, you know, one of the main chelators is DMSA. This is a molecule. Um, there's also EDTA that's helpful for lead removal, and it's a chelating agent. So it goes in and it binds the lead or mercury molecule and pulls it out. And over time, I think it's best to do it gradually because heavy metals, it's like, imagine a wine bottle and uh, you can't just push all of the heavy metals out through this narrow opening. It has to come out as the body can deal with it. So it takes a while. That's why it can take six to months to a year to, to really remove lead and heavy metals. Um, uh, and then there are nutrients that support the immune system. So vitamin D, of course, optimizing that is key. Um, and there are specific things that help. Uh, I like to use transfer factors, and these are like uh, helping immunoglobulins be produced and help your body fight um, Epstein-Barr virus. And then taking specific antivirals. So it's a matter of supporting the immune system through these nutrients and then tr killing the virus at the same time, Epstein-Barr virus and then mycoplasma uh, pneumonia. Um, and then, um, of course, diet's key, looking at um, removing sugar. And it's hard to cut out sugar. I mean, it's like becomes part of what, you know, we're just used to eating is part of um, enjoyment in life, eating sugar, and it's part of um, just celebration and feeling bad, feeling good. There's always a reason to have some sugar. And uh, I think that was one of the things we cut out sugar and it was hard for a couple of days, but you're able to do it. And um, let's see. I was so proud of myself. I made a keto cake for my friend hey. here and she had no idea that it was keto and she was also trying to be healthy. And so I wasn't going to tell everyone that it actually was keto friendly after. And she was so proud of it, me that I was able to do it. Cause it was like the first thing I've ever baked in my life. Amazing. Hard to do <laughs> for you. That's so yeah. cool. It was uh, fun. 
And so uh, are you still keto? As much as I can. Absolutely. I do um, a lot of the greens and Mm -hmm. the healthy oils when I cook. I use avocado oil and coconut oil when I cook and then drizzle olive oil over things that I eat. Um, I definitely want to be doing greens way more than I am, but I definitely am having each meal just as my snacks. I'm still going toward peanut butter, which at least is a little bit sweet. Um, there's these, there's a brand of protein bars that are made with peanut butter and a bunch of veggies that are actually really good. They're in the refrigerator section. I don't remember the name of them, but I have cool. them. <laughs> yeah. Send us a link later. Um, but that's great. Yeah. I think, you know, keto is really helpful for weight loss. It's really helpful for balancing hormones. If I can share your testosterone is a little higher. Which, I'm sure none of my friends would be ho- sh- shocked to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> part of that drivenness, maybe, you know, but then women that have higher testosterone, even if they have something called PCOS or not polycystic ovarian syndrome, some women, women will just have that higher testosterone, which, you know, theoretically can block some estrogen progesterone receptors, which increases serotonin. So there's less serotonin, there's more mood swings and difficulty around menstrual cycles, um, more irritability, more anxiety and depression essentially can be. And so lowering testosterone uh, is key. And actually there's a link between that insulin and testosterone. So insulin, higher insulin and insulin resistance will drive that higher testosterone And so that key there is, of course, lowering insulin, which is like a ketogenic diet or a low carb diet. And a lot of women with this higher testosterone insulin issue have difficulty losing weight. That was the sort of other goal that you had was weight loss. Yeah. I'm like textbook for PCOS symptoms. (laughs) Takes Uh, hangry to a whole new level. (laughs) And it was weird because remember, it wasn't every month. It was just every few months, I would just have these few days where I just felt like a monster taking over my brain. It was so bizarre because it just came out of nowhere. Right. Hormones are like... Birth control made it way worse. Right. Sometimes it helps women, sometimes not. There's different medications that can help. Um, One of the herbs that I like to use is called Vitex or Chaste Berry. And, um, you know, it's called Chaste Berry because monks would use this to become chaste, to lower their testosterone. And then (laughs) women, of course, it's very helpful and increases progesterone and lowers testosterone and works over several months period of time. Um, Berberine is very helpful for lowering insulin resistance and helping with blood blood sugar balance. But those are sort of secondary to low-carb diet and exercise. what else? Glutathione for detox. I was going to say, I'm glad that it tasted good. It was a blend of lemon and mint, which are two of my favorite scents. So <laughs> I would hold it in my mouth for a minute. It was actually just like almost having like a breath mint. So I'm All glad right. I did that for six months and it tasted good. <laughs> and it tasted good. Glutathione <laughs> can have kind of a sulfurous, weird taste. So yeah, you found a good, a good brand. <laughs> well, and it was so relaxing too. you, you know, the peppermint can help you feel relaxed, but also have more energy at the same time. And I was doing it before I went in the sauna and I love heat, but I like heat from the natural sun outside. So I kind of had to prepare myself to go into the sauna and it was almost like a cool ritual to do my, you know, liposomal glutathione before I went in there. Yeah. And the reason is helps your body get ready to detox and gives you all of the, um, and, you know, glutathione is an ant- intracellular antioxidant produced naturally by the, the body and the liver and the lungs and the brain. But uh, if you're like I, your body was using a lot of it for various purposes, from the heavy metals to even the um, infections. And so just you needed an extra dose. And then you take that right before the sauna. It's perfect to help your body get what it needs to then detox and you're in the sauna, you're cleansing, you're detoxing. And then after the sauna, you can take charcoal or clay and bind up anything that comes out into the gut and pull that out. It's kind of a modified um, Hubbard protocol. Yeah. I love that too. It was so refreshing after. 
because it didn't taste like anything. Right. It's, it's, it, so there can be some simple, powerful uh, techniques that can really help. Um, what else? I was going to mention something about ADD, just a, a different way to kind of look at it. Um, but uh, just thinking about the, the, it's like a hunter's brain. I've heard this analogy um, that, uh, you know, imagine like a hunter out in the forest, you pick up all of these different pieces of information. You can be, you know, it's very helpful. You hear the twig snap, you hear the leaves rustle and, um, that's where you want to pick up all the information, but then in our, you know, you're trying to focus on something and there's all these distractions, you pick up those pieces of information too. So if you're very focused on one particular thing and very excited about it, like the hunt or like the life or death scenario, that's, that will drive that pur purpose and um, passion and that will create dopamine to help with focus. So um, that's, that's you. You're very focused and determined, <laughs> which is good. Thank you. Yeah. So you've just done really well. I think um, it's a matter of um, recognizing that everyone's different, that we all have um, susceptibilities, and it's just figuring out what those are and putting them together. Um, it's not just one thing when it comes to, the, to health and the body and the brain. Uh, it's all of these individual pieces, putting them together is what really gives the best chance of optimal health, improved health. And that's what I love to help people do is improve their health as much as possible. Well, and I love that you were, you know, midway toward the end of my getting answers on um, the journey of all of that. Cause I did multiple scans. I did trauma work. I did the supplements. I did the diet exercise I just hadn't done the integrative stuff yet. And that was the key. And it was just cool because it made everything else so much easier. Right. The, the scans are so helpful for the map. Like you get this roadmap. They tell us there's a toxic looking scan for people and it can tell us, okay, there's something wrong, but it doesn't, it's very sensitive at picking up problems in the brain. But is this Lyme? Is this mold? Is this chronic infections? Is this heavy metals? That's where we have to then do the functional medicine piece. We do a thorough lab workup, integrate that with our history and our information. And um, sort of like we take that map and then we do a second level of uh, discovery and detective work to figure out, okay, how is this working in the body? What's actually going on um, in the body? And uh, can't know without testing. It's like Dr. Amon says, you don't know unless you look. He's referring to scans, but it's, a tr it's true for labs as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm just so grateful for everything that you've done for me and our mutual patients and our future patients. And Beth, I'm so glad that you were here. You're just very comforting to me. And I'm so glad that everyone will be able to see your face when they have questions about getting into Seattle to see you. And that was something else I wanted to mention because people, when I kind of call our coaches and obviously I'm calling from an Atlanta number, they get a little confused. So like, are you in the mm -hmm. clinic? Like, no. But I'm calling from Atlanta and then we just kind of talk and I say, you know, but we're doing virtual work. Dr. Chapik's my doctor. He's in Seattle. And if you ever want to use, you, use him, then you can. So that's right. a cool thing. I think that's come out of this really hard time in our society. So absolutely, I see patients all over the country um, virtually. It's great. You can do a Zoom call. It's almost like you're face to face and uh, we can share labs. That's the beauty of modern technology. So yeah, happy to help anyone that, that would like to look a little deeper into their health issues. So it's been I'm so grateful for the both of you and I'm so glad you're able to do this.